listen to what happens after I play the sound. Headphones recommended. Let's try it on piano. Now we're going to learn how to make this radioactive fallout effect from scratch. First thing, we're going to need some cool instrument. I found this little piano that I have here, the reflector piano, but you can use any other piano or basically any other instrument. The good thing to start is if it has like a really sharp attack, it's easier to set the instrument and then the effect actually. The main ingredient to it would be a redux. So let's find the redux. It will be here in audio effects. Let's go to Redux, and there it is here. Yeah, let's drop it after the instrument. Let's listen to how it sounds now. Not much because we didn't change anything in the Redux. So let's go down with bits to so like seven or eight ish, and then rate. I found it to sound really good around two and a half kilohertz, something like this. Let's listen to it now. Okay, really ugly, but that's what we want. But now we're getting all the signal coming through the Redux and there's no way that we could use our release stage to influence the signal. But that's what we'll be working on just at the very moment. Yeah, I'll be trying to go relatively quick in this video, but if you lost at any moment, feel free to pause or watch any other bits uh, just to make sure you understand everything. So now we're gonna find the effect that is actually the whole heart of this fallout radiation device and it's gonna be envelope follower. Now, if you have Ableton Live intro, you wouldn't have the envelope follower, but I'm gonna have a little workaround for you at the end of this video, so keep watching. First, we're gonna grab it. It's still in audio effects as well. Let's uh, go up a little bit, and here it is, where it is, envelope follower. Yeah, so just tap it just after the instrument, but before uh, the redux. And now what is gonna happen is just not gonna do anything basically. So we need to prepare the Redux to be in some kind of case, in some kind of box. So the effect rack is a super cool tool that will allow us to control the signal however we like. So we just simply press Ctrl G or Command G and there we go, it's in the audio effect rack. There it is, we can open this and we have this chain with Redux. Let's change name because it's not suitable for our purpose. Rad, ox, you know what I mean? And now we're gonna have another chain. Let's rename it also. So that would be our kind of clean signal. We're just gonna add maybe a little bit of the reverb, convolution reverb. There it is. We're not gonna change much. It sounds good as it is. Let's listen to just the uncontaminated version. Yeah, that's super cool. Okay, so now what the envelope follower will control, we need to map it to something. So we're gonna map it to the volume or level of the second chain with the Redux. Let's just bring it down a little bit to like say minus 11-ish decibel because we don't want these two signals to be too loud. And we can listen to just the second one. We The first one is dumb. Yeah, we hear it, but it doesn't really do anything. So let's map this to this chain here. Let's click here and here. And now it's going to work like that. Then we press the keys, it's going to be louder when the louder signal comes. Well, we want to have it working in the opposite way. So this little parameter controls which way does it work. So let's go to minus, let's say minus 59. I found it to be quite well working with the fast attack instrument. Yeah, but it doesn't really change much. So let's bring the gain up a little bit, quite, actually quite a lot. Let's go to, let's say 23 decibels and let's listen to it now. Oh yeah, here it is, it'll click at the beginning. And then we have the fold that is actually activating our Redux. Really cool, that's that's what we want. So now let's uh, bring this full parameter up, like let's say even to 70, 80, 90%. And let's listen to what's gonna happen now. Okay, yeah, we have this little, you see the graph, we have this little nice smooth curve line. So now we want this sound to be a little bit more loud and a little bit longer because we don't really hear it too much. So we're gonna be needing a reverb first. Let's, let's add reverb. So we'll make the sound a little bit longer. Let's add a really huge decay around like nine, 10 seconds. Let's cut the low frequencies a little bit and let's just add the dry wet signal to 100%. How does it sound like now? Okay, much better. We hear the fallout signal much more clear now. But it's still a bit quiet. Let's make it a little bit louder. So let's add a compressor in between. Let's find its compressor. It's gonna work really well. So we're gonna use the makeup gain, just press the makeup button. Let's go to this view here. And ratio I found this to be good around like three to one. And then reduce it a bit longer, like around 200 milliseconds will be fine. And then let's play with the threshold. So let's just press some keys and listen to and adjust the threshold accordingly.
Could it block all the really loud signals? And add quite a huge lot of makeup gain to the rest of the signals. Now we have it done. Let's listen to them both together. Super cool. And press the key. We only hear the clean signal uncontaminated, but when the release stage starts happening, we have this little fallout that's contaminating our sound and making it radioactive. So this effect track will be, of course, available to download from my website for free. Just follow the link in the description box down below. And now let's try to test it on the, something different like a pad. So we have the Angel Core pad. It's somewhere here in my presets. Let's drop it here onto new track, how it sounds like now. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, so if you'd like to create this pad, it's actually super easy, but more on that later. Okay, now, so before we copy it or move it, we need to group it together with the envelope follower and this audio effect rack, everything together because they're working uh, together. So just press Command G, Control G, and let's call it Fallout Device. Okay, and let's use Option or Alt to copy to the other track, and then let's try how it sounds on the pad now. Let's see the envelope follower, what it does. Cool, that's what you wanted, perfect. Don't need to change anything. You can, of course, play with the parameters just to make the fall faster or longer. Depends on what instruments are using. These are just these two knobs that you want to play with, probably. Now let's make a little workaround in case you don't have envelope follower. This is gonna be really simple. So let's delete the envelope follower. Let's say we don't have it. We have the auto effect track as it is in the fallout device. Let's not change anything. Let's go to the reverb section. Let's go to the very end of this change signal. And at the end, we're gonna put a compressor, just a regular compressor. At the very end, it's gonna be blocking the signal, but it has to listen to something first. So let's open this little dot here. Let's click sidechain. And then we want to choose the audio from. So this is just a tiny inconvenience. That's why the envelope follower is a little bit better, but if you don't have it, you can use this. So let's choose angel core number five. So it's going to listen to the same chain, but before all the effects. Now we just want to basically make the ratio infinity to one. Let's let's try it now. It's not doing anything. We need to set it up. Let's add the gain, of course, again. And let's add the threshold like that. Let's make the release a little bit longer. Yeah, so we see how it works. It's actually a really cool graph. So when we hit the keys, it's blocking all the signal almost instantly. You can play with the attack, of course. And then it's slowly releasing it. And if you're curious how I created this angel core sound, 